All right, we got a fun one for you today. Uh, today, I'm going to be taking a look at the Noctua NF-A6X25. This is the 5 volt version because I'm going to be using it on my child's uh, ultrasonic humidifier to basically help blow more air around uh, the room so that the humidity will spread rather than being in one spot and kind of circulating back into the fan. And to control that fan, I'm going to be using the na uh, FC1 controller and we're going to open it up and take a look at the fan and I'm going to attempt some light fan testing on it just to get some general performance. As a special note, 5 volt fans do work on uh, 12 volt uh, PC fan headers. However, uh, they will run at a much higher RPM and they're not necessarily rated for it. Um, so it could wear out the fan faster, and certainly Noctua may not be inclined to honor their six-year warranty. But um, I just wanted to note that because I've accidentally plugged in one of my other 5-volt fans into the computer before. Anyways, let's get into it and uh, take a look at everything. So here is the box for the um, NFA6X25. Uh, I'm not sure what model year this was developed by Noctua. Uh, I need to look, I guess I need to look at that, but it seems like a pretty uh, newer fan for them. Uh, airflow accelerating channels, AAO, fr did I say that right? AAO frame, uh, vibration dampers on such a small fan, that'll be interesting to see. Uh, custom uh, PWM IC SCD, uh, SO2 bearing, so that is the newer, one of their newer technologies. It's used on the um, NFA X25. Um, proprietary protection, six year manufacturer warranty. So they're bearing. I've already taken the, the fan out of the box, which is why that's empty in there. Uh, some of the technology about how the fan blades, uh, for simple illustration purposes, for how the fans help channel the air through it, what it comes with, and some basic specs. So rotational speed, 3000 RPM, that's really fast, but it is a very small fan, so it needs that kind of RPM to get the airflow. 29.2 um, meters cubed per hour. Um, sorry, I think in CFM, so I don't know what, how good that is. Decibels, 19.3, that's really good. And static pressure of 2.18. So it is a small fan, which means it's better at static pressure, so that is a a uh, pretty good number there. Uh, what is the use case for such a small fan? Uh, odd stuff like I'm using it for, or uh, if you have a uh, small build case, such as um, like an HTPC or Media Center PC, whatever you want to call it, and uh, the case is extra thin, and you just need a fan somewhere around the CPU or anywhere in the case to just get the air out. Now the 5 volt version, I'm not really sure how that would stack up in that, other than weird use cases like I'm using it for. But um, the 5 volt and the 12 volt have very similar specs overall, it's just the voltage input. We uh, move on to the fan, this is the controller box, open it up. Alright, we've got another box inside of it. And inside it comes with a SATA type power connector. Let's look at that in a second. To four pin and another four pin. Uh, you got a three way splitter to your four pin and another four pin. And here is the controller itself. So to um, Power it, you may need a uh, USB to um, uh, four pin. That's what I'm trying to think of because it does not come with it by default. I pause for a second off uh, our channel. I do have one. It's only a two wire. So um, reg voltage regulation. I'm not sure if, how well this will work. Uh, with a Noctua fan, whether I'll be able to adjust the fancy. So I'll be testing that out too. Um, I do have another one that is a Noctua. Uh, the Noctua one is labeled as NAAC7 USB power adapter. Oh, it's also a two pin. 
So this might just work the way I want it to. Where the, um, where'd it go? Do, 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 do. Where this controller actually will just adjust the voltage or um, amperage, whatever, voltage probably, running through it uh, to the fan side and just uses the USB side for power. I was holding it backwards like that. So we'll be testing all that out. Uh, here's the little controller. So you um, would plug in power on, well, you'd plug in power over there to whatever you're gonna use as your source. You plug it in and then you get the fan side over here. And as you twist the knob, it uh, changes the power. Sorry, I paused for a second to make sure I got my sword straight. Yep, you would input power on this side. It would run through this. And then, um, trying to orient myself on this properly. So minimum, twisting it to maximum, and output to your fan, and... Um, away it works and it works on 5 volt power and on 12 volts so you can plug this into your uh, desktop computer something like that plug in multiple fans control your fans if you want very manual control i've seen plenty of pictures of people using it that way um this is the nfa 6 x25 little fan I must say, that is the cutest little fan I've probably ever seen. All right, opening it up. What do we got in the box? Standard uh, fan screws. Um, looks like a little power cable connector that will then run to LED lights. Omni joint adapter set. I think some of the other five volts I have also came with that. So you can do a two-way adapter, uh, extender, and a EC1 extender cable. You got some vibration dampener in it. And then there it is. So just for a size comparison, <laughs> this is a, uh, what is it again? NFA12X25. So this is a 120 millimeter fan. Ta-da! So you could fit four of these fans, you know, in the same size that this fan would take up. Now, I wouldn't actually recommend uh, really doing something like that, meaning doing four of these little fans for one of these big ones because it'd be far noisier. And it's actually been tested, uh, I think on other channels for like large radios or something like that. And it didn't really work very well, Well, but it's a funny idea. I, I just have to say. Um, I love the fact that this has these ultra little tiny, just the cutest little vibration dampeners right on the corners. That is, that is so cute. Um, I mean, you could plug this, uh, the, it uses standard size screws, so you could, you know, screw it in anywhere in the case that this would fit. Um, you could use it to replace, uh, small fans in your CPU cooler. You could use it to replace, uh, to hook up on top of, uh, your overheating GPU, anywhere you would need to just hook up a fan to get extra airflow. It has directional arrows on the bottom. It has the stepped inlet that Noctua advertises. Uh, it's obviously very space constrained, so it's not as really full encompassing as their bigger fans. The um, posts in the back are very narrow. Proportionally, everything is much slimmer. The wires going in look a lot, they look thinner to me visually. Um, I don't have calipers to truly measure it. Uh, the posts are thinner. The motors, I mean, obviously the, the fan is the size of the motor, so. Um, but there we are. That's 
the NF-A625. And uh, we're going to try to do some testing. I'm going to see what kind of tests I can do to get some readings on its actual performance with uh, whatever I can do. So this is my very janky setup to uh, kind of try to get some estimation on the CFM for the NF-A625. There's the little fan, the microphone going through, the anemometer at the back. Uh, realistically, I'm not expecting this to uh, be that accurate, but it'll get us some numbers. So this is at 100% fan speed. You'll see I'm talking and the numbers are jumping. So uh, let's see what its uh, noise profile looks like. Actually, that's a pretty good and smooth uh, curve. No real spikes on there, which is really what you want in a fan. So its noise profile is really good. It's not that loud. And um, well, I guess the next step is plugged in the uh, USB. Here's the controller. And the next step is going to be plug it into my kiddo's uh, humidifier and seeing if I can disperse air better. Here are, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, my CFM values for the NF-A625, and I was only able to generate one graph. I did not attempt to plug in the fan to a PC, so I just used the little knob, and wherever I saw a uh, different CFM value basically appear. I would hold it at that uh, RPM so I twist it a little bit by a little bit, let it sit for a couple seconds. If I didn't see the CFM change, I twist it a little bit more until I saw the value change. So I don't have RPM numbers. But I do have decimals right here, and I had meters per, per, ah, per second, and I converted that to CFM, which is cubic feet per minute. And using that data, I was able to generate one graph. The x-axis right there is CFM. The vertical axis, the y, is uh, noise in decibels. And the data set used for the average fan in this graph, so that's this uh, darker blue line, is for an average 120 millimeter fan. So it actually is a pretty good fan for the noise that it generates. Uh, it does get a little bit noisy at the higher RPMs, but it's such a tiny fan, and I have such a specific use case, and it's not even running that fast, so um, smaller fans tend to be kind of noisier in some ways, based on other stuff I've read. Uh, if you're interested in me testing these tiny little fans, I'll need to think about how to test them. But leave comments down below for that sort of testing. Otherwise, I'm going to leave this as what it is, as a little side experiment I did. And this is the final. So I got the little fan blowing air this way. The steam is near invisible. But it's moving it. So it's a success. It helps just prevent the calcium or whatever uh, buildup underneath. And I think I've noticed an improvement.